everyone, my name is Chantel, and um, I'm a writing here at Mahalo College in Western Massachusetts. Um, the title of my talk is The Search for the E-Star and the Lack of Open Star Clusters. My two advisors are Dr. Noel Richardson and Dr. Kieran Griffin, and the graduate student that also helped me in this project as well. So let me start by refreshing memory about what an E-Star is. These hot stars rotate very rapidly, so fast that it begins to eject some of its own material. The outcome does not occur uniformly, it actually rises to the equator where it forms a disk on the star. Um, scientists are not too sure what the mechanisms um, govern this mass ejaculation, although there are many speculations, such as the binary star system, we see, in which we see in this example of beta CMI, um, pulsations, as well as, well as a magnetic field. So this disk is what makes a BE star very unique and different from a normal B-type star. Um, first and foremost, all BE stars have an emission line in its spectrum, um, hence the E in its name, E for emission. The next thing is that it has infrared access, meaning that um, the infrared radiation is actually greater for a BE star than greater than a normal B type star. And then, most importantly, it is sometimes transient, which allows the star to be in the normal B phase and also in the B, B phase. And so, because of these disks, the um, objective of this goal or this project is to find the lifespan of the disk of a BE star. How long does it take for the disk to grow, and how long does it take for the disk to dissipate? So in order to do this, we need a large statistical sample of these clusters. Clusters are an ideal choice because all the stars are um, away, away at the same distance, um, they're made about the same time, they're made from the same material. And so, unlike a biologist or a chemist, um, astrophysicists can't really manipulate the object that they're observing. So, Using clusters and studying them are the closest thing we have to a controlled um, laboratory environment. Since 2013, um, there have been images taken of 12 clusters of known BE stars uh, using the Discovery Channel Telescope, which is located in Arizona. Its primary mirrors are 4.3 meters long, allowing us to take beautiful images such as these ones. So you're now able to take an image like this. Now, where are the BE stars in this cluster? The first step in this project is to isolate the BE stars from the rest of the cluster. And so one effective method is using the HR diagram. Um, uh, to understand how stars are formed, astronomers, astronomers have been trying to um, find a correlation between stellar properties. And so in 1912, two astronomers, Edna Hertzsprung and Henry Norris Russell, was able to find this correlation between the temperature and the luminosity. As you can see, 90% of the stars um, fall into this um, diagonal band called the moon sequence. There are, the other 10% does not fit this mass luminosity. And to the right, we have the giants and the supergiants. And at the bottom, we have the white dwarfs. Another name for an HR diagram is the color magnitude, because the magnitude is usually plotted against the um, color. Now, when you hear the word color, you're probably thinking of the blue sky or the yellow sun. But uh, for astronomers, that word actually means something different. Color is the difference of the magnitude of a star in one filter um, and the magnitude of that same star in another filter. So the filters that we actually used for this project was B, V, R, and I, as well as H alpha off and H alpha on. Um, as you can see, different filters designate a specific part of the spectrum. So in this example, I'm going to be focusing on one cluster, um, NGC 7419. It has 37 known BE stars. It's about 4,500 light years away. A common color index is B minus V, um, in part because of history, because photometric plates are actually more sensitive to uh, blue light, and also in part because of physics, because B minus V is a good indicator of the temperature of the stars. And so, Using that as the x-axis and also B as the um, the B filter as the y-axis, I was able to get this plot. Um, if you look closely, the higher the magnitude is, the dimmer the stars are. So that means that there's actually going to be more errors. So if you look, the error bars increase as you go down. The dots that are filled all the way in are from the long exposure, and the dots at the top that are not filled all the way in are from the long exposure. Um, by using the long exposure, you're able to get stars that. Uh, dimmer, and by using short exposure, we're able to get stars that more bright. Um, 
So where are the BE stars in this plot? Well, using information available from WebGo, which is an online database um, operated by the University of Indiana, we were able to overplot this, and this is what we get. We expect the stars to actually be on the top of the main sequence because they're hot, bright stars. As you can see, the stars are quite integrated into this plot. So going back to the slide about what makes a BE star very unique, we know that it has an emission, right? So why don't we use the filters of H alpha R minus H alpha on? So using that now as the color index, where do we get this plot? Well, this is the main sequence, and so our prediction is that because H alpha is actually brighter than BE stars, we think that this is where the BE stars are. Again, over plotting, where the 37 known BE star BE stars are, we get this. As you can see, the majority of the stars that are on the right are BE stars, as what we have expected. But if you look closely, there are actually a few points here that um, fit into this main sequence. And so this could possibly be because they lost its disk during the time of observations, or they must have been misidentified, misidentified in the past. We then make a color color plot um, on the x axis is the B minus B, and the y axis is B minus H. Most of the stars fit in the positively sloped line, but there are some stars that actually are above this. And so we believe that this is where the BE stars are. Again, we've overplotted, and this is what we get. Um, if you look closely, there are a few, about six points that fit into this positively sloped line. And so from this, we can conclude that 31 of the known BE stars still exhibit this dust. Six of them have are on the main sequence, and that could be because of this loss of disk or the misidentified. And through this, we have now got, have 30 new candidate PE stars. Through this project, we can conclude that there's still a lot to be learned about the behaviors and mechanism that governs success. The next thing we learned is that we're only able to detect PE stars that have an active H alpha emission, H alpha emission during the time of observation. That means that we only get the lower limit of the true population of the BE stars. The last thing that we learned is that a color magnitude and a color color plot is an effective and a very easy way to isolate these stars. So going on, to reiterate what the um, objective of this project is, <coughs> is to find the lifespan. The first thing we needed to do was find the BE stars, and that is the, what we have done this summer. The next thing we have to do after that is to confirm that this, these candidate BE stars are actually to do exhibit the BE nature, and that can be done using spectroscopy. The next thing is to explore the variability of the disk over time, seeing how it grows and how it dissipates. Um, this project would not be possible with a lot of, without a lot of people, and so I'm going to take the time to thank you. First and foremost, Dr. Noel Richardson and Dr. Karen Griffin. Um, I also want to thank Cody Gertz for reducing all the images that I used throughout this project. And then also the BCT and the UT for allowing the user facility and as NSF. Thank you. So on your slide where you listed your findings from the clusters, you had you talked about the the 37 known BE stars and then the 30 plus new. Is that in addition to the 37 that were already known? Yes. Okay. That's in and you identified those using your color magnitude diagram? Yes. That's true. Yes. Um, I have two questions. Can you say something about how the cost spectroscopy could be used to confirm? Okay. And the other question is, does the data, the spectroscopic data exist, or do you need to go out and take that now? Uh, we would need to, to answer the first question. Um, we, we know that uh, a B stars exhibit an emission line, so we need to confirm that all the stars in the county of B stars have an emission line. And to answer your second question, uh, we will need to follow them. Yeah, yes. of Simplistic question from a non astronomer. Can you uh, explain what exactly is a B star? A B star? A B star. And then also, you said that this is a special kind of B star with the B, the emission as well. Would you expect to see this kind of behavior from other stars, not B stars? That not B stars. I know that there are AE stars as well. Um, so yes, there are, we do see this among other stars as well. Um, we see them typically in younger B stars, I would say. Uh, they're more common. As for um, what a B star is, so to um, um, 
there are different ways to spectrally classify a star. O, B, A, A. Uh, <laughs> okay, so there are different ways to um, identify um, a star spectrally, and so OBAA, F, G, K, M, and so you can remember it very easily by saying, oh, be a fine guy or girl, kiss me, and so that's how I remember it. <laughs> and so um, this star actually is, um, so going this way, okay, the hotter it is, it goes this way, so hotter. And then, um, uh, no, is it the other? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so then, um, also, H alpha is more, at, um, it's higher in front of H stars, I believe. And so, um, the B stars that we're, the stars I'm looking for are a special type of B stars, which are here. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's thank you. Oh, go ahead, Lawrence. Yeah. What do you know? What spectroscopic resolution you would need? Confirm those thirty plus. How easy is that? Yeah. Uh, I am. I'm not too sure. I'm sorry. Uh, it won't have to be too high. You just have to be able to see a couple spectral features to know that they're B stars and they have a vision. Could you do it with objective prism? Or something similar. So you got the whole cluster at once. So. The problem with objective prism is you get the whole cluster at once. <laughs> and there's a lot of stars there. So it's probably better done with multi-object spectrograph. All right, let's thank the team.